Hey everybody, Glenn Tompkins here from Vector S on our YouTube channel. Folks, today I got an interesting video. I'm gonna talk about a stock that's hot and a stock that's not. But on the stock that's not, you gotta stick to the whole end of the video because there might be a good surprising twist at the end. So before we get started, if you wanna know what these two stocks are, you sit right there. <music> Hey everybody, Glenn Tompkins from our Vector Vest YouTube channel, senior instructor here. Love bringing these videos to the forefront for you guys. And you know something? I like that instead of being a one trick pony talking about one or two stocks, that we talk about a lot of different stocks out there. There's a lot of stocks in the world to invest in. Before we get started, if you're brand new to the channel, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. And we have a second channel. Please subscribe to that channel as well. Folks, hit that like button because this is what makes these videos gain more popularity and get shared out all over the place. And if you wanna be alerted to all of the new videos that come out when they come out, don't forget to hit the bell icon. All right, so let's get into it. One stock I'm gonna talk about today is hot because of news, and one stock I'm gonna talk about that's really not hot right now, but there's a little chatter, a lot of chatter that could be taking focus off of that stock. So let's get started. The one stock that I'm gonna talk about is marijuana stocks. Why? Because Schumer to unveil, uh, uh, unveil a federal marijuana legalization bill on Wednesday. Now, the interesting thing about this is that uh, marijuana is legal in 18 states, and it's medically legal in 37 states. I'm going to show that real quick. Uh, marijuana is all is coming up all over the place. 18 states and Washington D.C. where medical marijuana is legal in 37 cent uh, in 30 and it's legal uh, in 37 states. Most recently, New Mexico, Virginia, Connecticut legalized recreational cannabis. So I'm putting that in there as a backstop to give an understanding of where the legalization is happening. But where it's not happening is on the federal level. And one of the three things that as this new administration came in, I uh, was talking about was infrastructure, was COVID-19. Uh, it was marijuana and it was the ability to relieve a lot of school debt. So that's that was the forefront of what was going on. And marijuana was high on the list pardon the pun on words, but it was. So there's a bill going to be introduced on Wednesday. Now, how far will this go? I don't know, but it is going to be put out there. I think that more and more people are wanting the federal, the federal legalization of marijuana because, you know, even though these other states have it, the federal government can still come in and shut down some of these dispensaries for, you know, whatever the reasons, blah, 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 blah. I think that it's an uphill battle for them to do so, especially if the states have medically uh, uh, legalized it, whether it's for legal, uh, for medical marijuana or for recreational use. So this bill, two sources who were briefed on the plan said, the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, uh, Senate, uh, Senate Finance Committee Chairman Ron Wyden, and Senator Cory Booker will hold a press conference Wednesday to unveil a preliminary vision of what's being titled the Cannabis Administration and Opportunity Act. Now, that's on one side of the aisle. The other side of the aisle may not like it, and there's going to be some infighting. It is what it is, and I think that most of all, uh, the population within the United States is at the point, I think, that they just want to legalize the marijuana, get it out of the way. Remember, cigarettes at one point, uh, well, actually, alcohol at one point, remember back in the days where it wasn't legal and then finally they legalized it? And, you know, I, I think that, you know, no matter where you stand, that it's time for it to be legalized. The government can make a lot of money off of that. And a lot of you out there say, well, you think that because it's, you know, it may not be the right thing to do that the government making money. Listen, it is what it is. All right. I'm not here to judge. I am not here to judge. I'm the last person on this planet to judge. But I'm thinking that it's getting closer and closer to being legalized. And this is going to be a first step forward. So on the hot side, I'm going to say marijuana is it. And it is just news right now. Now, the other side of it, huh, a lot of you are going to sit back and go, whatever. Well, the side that's on the not side is, did Reddit's Wall Street bets give up on GameStop? 
AMC and Wish. Now, a lot of people that are here are going to sit back and go, man, you don't know what you're talking about. I actually do. And I'm going to put a different spin on it. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I'm one of the apes. I am not, but I'm still in the stocks, both GME and AMC, not trading Wish, but I am in those. And for those of you who are new to the whole Reddit thing and understanding what's going on with especially GameStop and AMC, it is a movement. These stocks have been overshorted, 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 and these companies are pivoting to do better in regards to making their companies, both of them, viable. When you look at GameStop, Patrick has done a lot of great uh, videos on GameStop. I'm, on the other hand, doing the videos on AMC. So nonetheless, they are being covered on our channel, but I'm not super fanatical about it. I'm an investor, and I'm trying to teach people how to be investors and not try to look for the get rich quick. Because mama always said, if something looks too good, it probably is. So I'm keeping that in mind. I'm keeping that in the back of your mind. And there's a lot of people out there saying, no, 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 you don't understand. This is a swan event. And I actually think that it could be a black swan event. Thus, the reason why I'm trading both of them, both the uh, GME and AMC. But I also want to be smart about what I do. My job is to help you to make money. And if that's what you're here to do, um, I, I have sold some of my AMC and people that say, you're crazy. You sold for peanuts. I sold for good peanuts. I, when I was up 500% on the trade, I sold for good peanuts. And a lot of people say that was just the beginning. The short squeeze hasn't happened yet. I totally understand that. But there's a lot of another piece to this story. It may not be specifically about GameStop and AMC, but JP Morgan warns hedge funds uh, to expect intraday margin calls. And this is more so than just AMC and GME. It's more about what Archegos did. The biggest U.S. banks by asset called clients of its prime brokerage division in the aftermath of the collapse of the Archegos Capital Management. You remember they shorted on something. I don't remember which, uh, and Patrick told me, and I forgot. But they ended up having to uh, sell off good stocks like Viacom to overcome the margin call. So this JP Morgan story, and this is still a developing story, is all about letting hedge funds know we're looking at you. And if what you're doing looks kind of winky wonky, we're going to, that's the technical term, winky wonky. If it looks winky wonky, then we're going to turn around. You're going to get intraday margin calls so that something like Archegos doesn't happen again. Now, what does that mean for the AMC and GME people? Well, because these stocks are so overshorted, some of these hedge funds may get intraday margin calls where they have to fill at a much higher price, which is going to bode well for both AMC, GME, and a lot of these stocks that are way overshorted. All right, so those are the stories. Now, I'm going to get us into the VectorVest software, and let's go take a look at them there. Now, um, I'm going to start off here looking at uh, my two stocks. MJ is the ETF alter, uh, alternative harvest for marijuana. Instead of looking at individual marijuana stocks, I wanted to look at the whole industry. I think that's a safer place to be. But if you have a marijuana stock that you really, really like, by all means, rock and roll. But I'm going to use that MJ to help you to time when it's okay to get into it. And of course, AMC is here as well. I'm going to bring up both of these graphs real quick, and I'm going to show you what I like and what I don't like. So as I bring up MJ, and I was going to put this on a three-month graph. You guys know I love three-month graphs. The first thing that steps out to me is that this is a flag, a pennant. And look at that. There's my lower highs. Here's my lower lows. I could actually take it back from here, but that's not a real place to take it from. Um, and here's my flagpole. Um, I like that this is setting up very nicely, utilizing the news to get in on marijuana, but time the trade time to trade. So if I'm looking at an ETF right now, I got a level of support sitting on MJ sitting at 1981. It's currently below. I like the turn up of the three and the eight. I've got three and eight exponential moving averages. What am I looking for right now? Well, it's setting up as a pattern that's a bullish pattern. And here's my flagpole from a low to a high. And that's going to be my profit 
objective from that high once we break out of this flag of $3.78. And I'm looking at a profit target on MJ at a price of $26.43. Right now, it's trading at $19.58. And remember, this is an ETF that looks at the whole space instead of one individual stock. And I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to ask it now. Based on the two stories, would you like to see a video on Friday that's looking for six hot marijuana stocks? Or would you like to find six stocks like AMC that are low dollar stocks to get into? Uh, let me know in the comments which one you want to see. And my Friday's video will be determined by what your comments let me know. So I'm going to also do the video on Friday, but it's going to be based on what you tell me in the comments. Now, what I'm looking for, I'm looking to see if the stock MJ could break through this trend line to the, uh, to the top of this trend line break out. I like that the stock is also in oversold territory. So this stock is all poised to go up by way of the pattern, by way of bouncing off support, by approaching resistance to three and the eight. And again, my profit target, if you're trading this, after it breaks out of this channel is $26.43. And again, if you're trading an individual like Tilray or Kronos or any of those stocks that are hot in this space, then I'm going to say use the ETF as a method to time when to uh, let those trades, watch those trades rock and roll. Now, the other side of it, let's go to AMC. Now, in AMC, I did something a little different. I used Fibonacci retracements from a low to a high on a three-month graph to see where the stock is. And this is why I say it's not hot. There's a lot of people pulling your attention away from GME and AMC at this particular point in time. And, you know, there seems to be some disinterest. Don't get it twisted. AMC and GME still are overshorted. Now, as I look at this, the news coming out, what's going on with JP Morgan could bode well for AMC, GME, and any of these way overshorted stocks. But a couple of things catch my attention. The 3 and the 8 have recently turned over. It's in a downtrend. It's breaking through a level of support at 39.24. Am I telling you to get uh, scared and get rid of it? No. I still have it. I am. I still believe that there's a lot of upside potential here. I am not a fanatic about it. I am not afraid to say that. And if that turns some of you off, so be it. I am all about trying to help you guys make money. And if you, in your, in your mind, say, you know, this is a little bit too risky for me, then by all means, you think about taking your profits. This is still a risky trade. There's no ifs, no ands, or buts about it. There's nothing sure saying that this stock is going to do this, that, or the other thing. But the due diligence says that this stock has got a lot of potential to go way, way up if these hedge funds have to cover their shorts. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Now, in the meantime, if you're waiting for a better opportunity to get in, you know something, look at the 3 and the 8 on an end of day basis. That could be a good early opportunity instead of holding it and holding it and holding it. And a lot of people are saying, no, 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 I'm buying more, I'm buying more. That's the worst thing I'm ever going to tell anybody to do is the dollar cost average down. Let's make sure that the stock is doing what you want it to do. And if you're already in and you say, I'm going to buy more on sale and it keeps going down, I'm going to buy more on sale, I'm going to buy more on sale. And you know, you dollar cost average down. What if? There's the big what if. What if this doesn't pan out? Then what? That's all I got to say about that. I am not a fanatic about it. I am not an ape. I am a realist and I'm going to report to you as a realist. And if that doesn't, again, doesn't bode well with you, so be it. My job is to help you make money in the market. It's an aggressive trade. It's a risky trade. It's all of those things. But I think that the news behind it with what's going on with JP Morgan, knowing that the stock is definitely oversold and it's bouncing off a level of support, there's a lot of things that are in the favor of the stock's price going up. But do you have the patience to deal with it? If you don't, it's okay. And a lot of them say, no, 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 don't tell them it's okay because then they're going to hurt the rest of us that are holding it. Listen, everybody's in this business to make money for themselves, not for you. All right. And you know something? I love that the retail investors have come together and they've banded together. That's an awesome thing. I love it when people work together. But everybody in this business, everybody who's invested in the market does so on their own. And you've got to make your own decisions for yourself. Don't let anybody else sheepishly push you into what they think. I'm not going to do it. But there's a, lot of, there's, there's a lot of awesome opportunity here. 
You all have to make the decision. All right, with that, folks, I want to say thank you for joining me for this video. Folks, this could be a game breaker. It could be on whether it's on the, the one that's hot or the one that's not. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see on Friday in follow-up to this story. Until the next time, folks, this video is over. See ya.